Hey everyone, something a little bit different today. Oh, we've got some highlights here for you from the stream where we went after the final boss in Gloomhaven Digital's Guildmaster mode. It's a little bit different to, say, the campaign. And this is the culmination of that mode in which you defeated all of the other bosses from all of the different story missions that all of the different characters have. And then this final boss mission unlocks. Um, I'm also giving away currently five keys to Gloomhaven Digital as courtesy of Asmodee Digital and Flaming Fowl, the developers. So check the link down below in the description for this video and also I'll pin a comment at the top there on how you can enter. The competition is running for a couple of weeks, so don't forget to check down there if you're watching this fairly recently. And yeah, maybe win yourself a copy of Gloomhaven Digital. So thanks again, Asmodee and Flaming Fowl for the support. Now, because we are going across all of these sort of weird and wonderful techniques, there are going to be major, major spoilers in this video for every single character pretty much in the game. There's also going to be spoilers for pretty much all of the items, or at least a lot of the high-level items in the game too. So if you are playing your own campaign tabletop version of Gloomhaven, or if you want to keep yourself spoiler-free, then this might be a video you want to skip. You know the drill too. If you do enjoy the video, please do consider tossing it a like and subscribing, and heading over to twitch.tv slash request where I stream every Monday, Wednesday, and Sunday, and maybe tell me how you think you could kill the boss, or maybe you've got your own inventive ways in which you can go about dealing with this final boss. All right, guys, I won't keep you much longer. Let's get into it. So, here we go. I think we just go in with our team as is, and we just try it. We've got a pretty good team for, like, boss killing, because we have a lot of high damage output with the Doomstalker, potentially high damage output with the Berserker, and the Swordbones is no, you know... Can also kind of pump out some damage themselves too. So objective, kill the Dark Rider. The Dark Rider will teleport in before their turn and teleport away after melee attacking. So this is... This can be very difficult for this kind of boss to deal with. So again, ranged is probably going to be a bit easier. So maybe the Berserker might struggle a little bit to get you know, into position. But the Doomstalker should do a fairly good job as long as they can keep within range. We've also got just got bears imps and is that wind demons as well um is this like a turn one flurry of axes i mean one two three four five two five dark and skies <laughs> do we just go do we just go for it i mean i want to do flurry of axes and blood pact on the first turn seems pretty good dark and skies this is the kind of thing where i want to go really like, this is a dangerous room, right? Really dangerous. So I just need to... I basically just need to... Um, go as quick as I can. Gaining pierce on something could be quite nice. Like on one of these guys with three shield. Just double shield. Shield two. Hope that most things dead. 13. A little bit of a problem, but not too much of a problem. Oof. Oh, times two on that guy as well. Disadvantage here, but I mean, do we really care about that? Where's this guy going to come from? Move 6, attack 5 plus X, where X is the number of hexes Dark Rider has moved this turn. That's a lot of damage. Thanks, Phil. We're actually all disarmed now, though. Whoa. Forty-eight health. See ya. <laughs> okay. I, mean, I can race to the grave and kill this this turn, which is quite nice. And then I can invis myself. Also pretty nice. 
I really want to try and kill this with do no harm, I think. Or the imp at the back, maybe. How are you supposed to kill him if he teleports in and out? So he will teleport in before their turn and teleport away after melee attacking. If he has a turn where he is not melee attacking, then he won't teleport away. So we have to wait for our chance. So there'll be a window where he won't attack. And that will be our chance to get him. So that's that's how we do it. It's not obviously obvious from this, but not he is not going to melee attack every single turn, but he will teleport in every single turn. So he's going to move forward, summon forest imp, and then attack. Um, obviously, if, he, if we manage to get away from him so he can't do his attack, he won't actually um, teleport away, I believe. So, honestly, I think it's just better to ignore him until we can actually really deal with him. I think I can doom him as well. Yeah, we need to get wound and doom on him, right? So as soon as he appears, we need to get, get that going, really. What's a good way? Like, I still kind of need to kill these imps. I might want to kind of ignore them slightly. I'm a bit, a bit nervous about doing that too much, right? Well, I can't see any scenario markers right now, right? Sigma? Unless I'm missing something. Unless it's these obstacles. There isn't any markers. Damn. Okay, we'll have to figure it out. I'm pretty sure the first spawn was here. Second spawn was, I think, here. So maybe the next spawn's going to be down here somewhere. One, two, three, four. Well, he would struggle with move four. If he spawns here, one, two, three, four. Oh. I guess I need to, if that's the case, on the next turn, I need to like move forwards up here. I can't use this to move anything into a, a decent way either. Oh, he spawned here. Okay. So we've had here, here, and I think here. Problem is, me like, melee are going to really struggle against this guy, right? Melee are very much going to struggle. I wonder if he's going to spawn there. Heal. Okay. Move three. Oh, range, though? Oh, but it's not Miss Melee. Okay. He's going to stay. That's good. He's going to stay. It's only melee attacking that he disappears away, and this is a ranged attack. Perfect. Well, I say not perfect because he probably kills my saw bones, but, you know. Melee with invis would work. Yeah, I think we would need to maybe I mean, cloak of phasing on this. Oh, cloak of phasing on this particular scenario would be insane. You just wait. You just go on. You just make sure that you end your turn on an obstacle. He comes in. Go attack him. Then maybe he attacks you and disappears. Then you just go on an obstacle and he comes back again the next turn. You could easily do it with cloak of phasing, actually. How goes the boss lane? We've just started and we haven't done a single point of damage. So, yeah, pretty good. Of course he's there. No! That, sir, was just incredibly rude. Right. What's, what's 48 divided by 2, chat? That's how long we got to survive. Attack these two or get some damage on the boss. I I win if I kill the Dark Riders. So I don't need to just kill... I don't need to kill these guys. But they are doing damage and poison and just being generally annoying. Is it worth me getting an attack of three onto this guy? I mean, I guess I would tank, which is also kind of relevant. Is he immune to immobilize? Yes. He's immune to poison, immobilize, disarm, and stun. So you can curse him and we can wound him. So if he's going to disappear again, what's the best thing for us to do? Okay, look, staying at one end of the room would seem to give you a 50-50 chance that he can't reach me to teleport. Yeah. Also, he won't teleport in in the same location sort of twice in two turns. So he teleported in here last time. Summons are actually quite bad in this scenario too, right? Because they just give him something else to hit. A retaliate build seems like it might be good for this encounter. Yeah, that wouldn't be too bad. I think it would go on for a long time, right? Right now, you'd have to use something else as well. I don't think you could go like pure retaliate, but 
Yeah, that would certainly help. Oh, okay, good. Move six, though? Jesus. That move six gets him pretty much... I mean, to anywhere in the scenario he wants, really. Apart from one extreme edge. There he is. He's coming. I mean, I need to take my chances when I get him, right? I think that's the thing with this. You need to, like, just capitalize on the chances that you get. So I should just go for it like this. Same here, really. Um, perfect. Maybe we'll just go all out. So maybe I could use Bloody Saw, which means then I could actually, instead of going for Burning Hatred, that means I could go for Bounce Back. A little bit nicer. An attack of three versus you know, something else. On 10. Go for Bloody Saw top. Go for first aid bomb. Just go super early just to try and catch him out. Well, that's 14 initiative. Good job I did, huh? Look at this. Doomed Compass doing work. You love to see it. And now we can actually get two targets with this. Oh, it's perfect. Right, here comes the here comes here it comes the miss. First try. <laughs> Yeah, boy. That was good. Spicy. Ta da! I mean, we had a good team for this mission as well, to be honest. This is a really good boss killing team because you just have the Doomstalker, who's just insanely good at doing um, all in damage, right? On something. And with the Cobra, we got like three hits with the Cobra out. That's pretty decent. Then you got the Berserker. I mean, both of these were really good at just killing the room as well. Kind of resetting the room, which was nice. Let's try a different team. Let's try something less like set up, I guess. Let's try the Retaliate. Should we go Retaliate? Increase the value of each of our Retaliate abilities by two. Thank you very much. Right, so then for the Sunkeeper... We're probably pretty good. So we have Purifying Aura. No, I think we have everything here, right? For this build. Engulfing Radiance seems okay. Bound Wavering Mandate is also pretty nice. Soothsinger, I think, has pretty much got everything that we would want. It's just classic Soothsinger, right? We don't have that crutch of, hey, let's uh, let's just go uh, do Flurry of Axes, Darker Skies, Turn 1, and just kill the majority of the room so we don't have to worry about it. We're actually going to have to engage with the scenario a little bit more. So the scariest enemies we have here are probably the Wind Demons and actually the Bear, I would say. Wind Demons are pretty scary. Attack 4. This guy's got a big attack, though. Attack 7. Attack 5. I could probably go here with my Cloak of Phasing and actually just curse, like, uh, stun these two. Divine Intervention, it could be interesting here. If we hide behind, if we let the Berserker be the front person and we hide behind, that could work really well. Because about being cursed when you're uh, <laughs> never going to attack. But now I can basically just tank up as much as I like. Like now I'm in a, a really nice position where it's just, okay, let's just tank. Move four, attack six. Okay, so hopefully he's not going to be within range of us. Now we just start spamming the curses. That first turn on the last attempt did so much work. Yeah, I mean, it really just flips the... It just flips the scenario in your favor, right? You should never be too scared to just go all out. And the fact that we had probably arguably the, some of the best sort of single room clear cards was pretty good. 
You wish there was an indicator for where he's going to spawn, like in physical. I, I don't. I kind of might. I don't mind it this way. I think the the mystery, the mystery makes it kind of exciting. This is going to be like the slowest way to kill a boss ever. We needed a bit of that. We needed a bit of that. In a weird way as well, I actually want to stick the Berserker out in the middle of this round, so... Because I don't want this to be too much, but also the range 2 that he has for his Retaliate um, on Echoing Aria is kind of important. It's annoying because these guys aren't attacking, because if they were, we could go crazy here. I think probably here's the best. I don't want to use immortality. This is a big bit. <laughs> this is a huge build up here for what is probably not going to be that good. Right. I mean, I should have. Like a, cr a ridiculous amount of retaliate now, chat. A ridiculous amount of retaliate. Here we go. Oh no! You're gonna pull me this way? Do I take one damage? Fifteen! There we go! <laughs> That's what we're talking about! Fifteen! <laughs> Permanently disarmed? No problem. No problem. Can't touch me. This is going surprisingly well. Going surprisingly well. <laughs> okay, well we, we gotta we gotta feed them back into some curses, right? Right? Spike down marine mortality again. Let's do it. If I had wound on this instead of poison, this would be so good. <laughs> the amount of cursing in this chat is just pretty crazy. This is why the music note is one of the best characters in the game. I am getting pulled quite far away though. It's a bit worrying. Uh, I could probably take that three actually. Oh no. No! Foiled. Yeah, boy. A little bit spicy. What is this? We've been foiled. No. <laughs> That's not fair. They can't do that. What? Wind demons. What are you playing at? I have like no armor here. This is not good. I am very much banking on. <laughs> on these shields. Oh, come on. That was a blowout. I had such a good next turn. We're getting dangerously low. Good. They've still got a fair few curses in the deck, so.
All right, so now I have to play Soothing Lullaby next turn. We need to retaliate to give wound. Yeah, I know, right? Okay, well, that might be a bit of a problem. That's it, we're dead. <laughs> Bring in the falcon. Right, I'm going to need to use my rocket boots and like, like get straight in there, right? We need a big spiked armor turn. A big one. I mean, do I just dirge and hope at this point in time? I probably do, right? If I was to stun these guys, maybe that'll be okay. Hey, Stanley, you didn't pick on top of the you think? Oh, the card had attack four on the bottom. Seems slightly better. Oh, no. I, to be clear here, this build is terrible. <laughs> yes, the other card is much better. This card is off. This, this build is very... It's spicy. <laughs> this is cl this is clearly just build around. We are just trying to do retaliate as good as we could possibly do it. Good as subjective. It made us laugh and broke the boss. Yeah, true. I mean, somebody's got to try these things out, Rhino. So why not? Why not us? <laughs> it's it's kind of working. I mean, the sun is dead, though. That's a big problem. Oh, no. I have to burn a card as well. I can't get it. I mean, I have to just reduce the damage now. How did you get... How? This might be where it all falls down, chat. Oh. <laughs> okay. Is he riding a bear now? So I guess it's because he he's not... He's there, but he's not there. Oh, he's there, but not there. My dirge didn't target him for a curse either. So he's there. He, so it's just a visual. He's not actually, he isn't there. Like it is literally just a visual bug. So I couldn't target him if I tried, I guess. So where did he come from that time? Like there? Do I just want to get myself in like the most, like, what's he doing? What's his movement? Four. Oh, where he spawns is super important here. No! With one card left! With one card left! <laughs> That's how we do it! Who needs to attack bosses, huh? Who needs to attack bosses? Yeah, <laughs> boy. A little bit spicy. We can go for the one turn kill as well. So the one turn kill would be um, basically we need to use uh, a combination of resolute stand and uh, the other one the glass hammer so we'd use glass hammer and resolute stand together we would need to gain advantage and have blesses in our deck and have ways to pump up the damage ring of brutality ring of haste then we want 
uh, power potion. These imps might actually make it a little bit awkward because they're obviously going to come in and, uh, and actually clog up all of these spots that are near to us. Yeah, now awkwardly I can't actually get to the berserker. I guess I could have strengthened them. Yeah, there's one downside of that. Um, yeah, we didn't get the perfect opening uh, draw for this, I guess. Not terrible, though. So I'm going to use this as essentially a way to get Horntown to trigger. And we start off with Glass Hammer. And we go pretty early here with Disorienting Dirge, tuning the outcome, and hopefully that's going to be that's going to be good enough. It should be. All right, he's coming on at 85. Perfect. Perf Actually, no, not perfect. Shit. <laughs> not perfect. Ah, uh, we need him to go in before. He's being elusive. Right, I guess I still go invisible here. Because I still just want him around, right? I just I just shift my turn to the next turn. Because if he spawns somewhere and hits, that'll be really frustrating. I mean, there is an open hex here. It is moving six. So if he spawns down here, then could just disappear again. We're now maxed out on blesses, I think. Because there's a maximum of 10, and we've ended up kind of putting two into the Sunkeeper. So I just chill and I short rest to get Glass Hammer back, I think. Or I could use Star Ring to get Glass Hammer back. Actually, short rest would do it with this, right? There he is. 54 health. So I use Bounce Back. Then we use the Top of Glass Hammer. Then we use Ring of Brutality to play Resolute Stand. And then we can play Ring of Haste if we want to. To, uh, like, finish off the job, maybe, with a Bone Breaker. One, two, three, four, five. One down. We are moving more. All right. 27, first attack. Um, we will use the Power Potions. We will use the Tremor Blade. And we'll use the Poison Dagger. 31. Ah, that's a good day's work. <laughs> totally fair and balanced in every way. <laughs> no, that's a lot of damage. You guys see the log? Just about. Glass hammer. Easy. Easy. I feel a bit like lost now. Like, what do I do? So there we have it, guys. Three ways to kill the boss. One just really pretty straightforward and pretty fair. The second way, very long and hard, but doable definitely with the retaliate. And the third way, probably the quickest way of you being able to kill the boss. If you really just wanted to kill it in a couple of rounds, then... Hey, you always got that option on the table too. But really, I don't uh, think that you should go down that route. You should try enjoying these kinds of scenarios. There are lots of broken things in Gloomhaven. Lots of rules that, you know, now potentially in Frosthaven, we're not going to see because they're just too powerful. There's these things that just maybe the power level's a bit high. And we're at level nine with all of the items, all of the gold and all of the enhancements, you know, we could ever possibly dream of. So please don't take this as a representation of what the tabletop campaign of Gloomhaven will be. This is much, much different. This is basically just, you know, a bit of fun. As always, if you do enjoy the video, then please do consider tossing a like and subscribing. And of course, always heading over to twitch.tv slash mandatory quest, where you can see me every Monday, Wednesday, and Sunday streaming Gloomhaven Digital pretty much as always. And yeah, just having fun. And it's actually coming up to my two year anniversary on Twitch. And we'll be doing something special for that on the 17th of July. So pop on over. We'll be doing a special stream. Maybe play some other games, play some just weird and wonderful board games, maybe. Play some like Jackbox and some like games with chat, I think. It should be a bit of a fun time. So come hang out maybe on that stream and yeah, have a beer with me and yeah, talk Gloomhaven. Okay, guys, if you did get this far, thank you so much for watching to the end. I will catch you in the next video. Bye.
Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I'm interested. Oh, 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 that's the blessing so, from uh, uh, Isaac. At this point, can we uh, get your approval to add an additional attack modifier deck uh, for allies in the digital version? <laughs>